everyone and welcome back to Midnight Theories. And if you're new here, welcome to Midnight Theories. Forget everything you thought you knew about K-pop. Welcome to your new home for all K-pop related theories, urban legends, and news. Enjoy your stay, consider dropping a like, subscribe, and don't forget to hit that bell to be notified when I release a new video. Pranks Pranks in K-pop have been used to entertain the fans and playfully mess around with the idols. We have the popular ghost pranks, Pranks that put the idol in awkward situations, fighting pranks, and then there are the pranks that just go way too far and emotionally take a toll on the idols for entertainment at the idol's expense. Here are a few pranks I've seen that took things a little too far for it to be just a prank. Produce 101 is a reality slash survival show that's known to evil edit and push the idols to the extreme for ratings. In season one, the producers played multiple pranks on the girls. In this particular hidden camera prank, the producers pretended to individually interview the girls and test their personality and responsibility levels. Then the girls were put to the test to see if they would help and take the blame or watch as the staff member panics. From what we are shown, the girls all tried helping the staff member and comforted her. They all took the blame for the broken camera and were told that it cost $30,000 to replace. They were only trainees at the time and already in debt to their companies. This was such a cruel experience to put the girls through because many thought they would be in more debt to their companies and punished by getting no screen time on the show, or worse, having to leave their company. The girls were handed the phone to talk to their CEO or parents and that's when it was revealed that it was just a prank. As a rookie group, everything is always exciting and new. Their first showcase, their first fan event, and even their first interviews. They are just beginning to learn the ropes and putting their training to the test. And with this prank, as a rookie group when this happened, Girls Day had to learn how to deal with mistreatment on the spot. The girls had a reality show that followed their day-to-day -day life. And for their show, the producers thought it would be funny to set the girls up on a fake interview and have the interviewer be rude to the girls to see how they'd handle the situation. From the beginning, the interviewer already set an uncomfortable introduction with the girls. He said, you look different from TV. And already messing up their title track name on purpose and proceeds to say he's a fan. The interviewer also directed them a bit behind the scenes, which could have come off a bit rude due to his word choices. The rude comments progressed as the interview went on and made the girls visibly uncomfortable and upset. <laughs> After the interviewer stopped the interview multiple times and belittled the girls, Member Jihei had enough and spoke up. Do interviews usually have this? It's the first time doing personal talents and such during an interview, so I was surprised and I'm sorry about that. We're sorry that we couldn't do well. The interviewer acted like he was about to retaliate after Jihei's comments, but, but that's when it was revealed that it was a hidden camera prank and two of the members were actually in on it. Living as an idol is hard work. You're constantly training, practicing, and have jam-packed schedules. And just about every idol is so busy or are from different countries that they can't see or talk to their family members for months or even years. In an episode of Roommates, GOT7 Jackson's roommates decided it would be a funny prank to trick Jackson that his mom had secretly flown all the way to Korea to see him. For some background context, in an earlier episode, Jackson opened up that he hasn't seen his parents in a really long time and how hard it was for him to move to Korea all the way from Hong Kong, alone without knowing how to sing or dance. He also expressed how much he missed his mom. Two of his roommates showed up to his showcase to surprise him and show support. One of his roommates entered the waiting room first and brings up the conversation of his mother. He asked Jackson if he misses his mom and told him, it's possible your mom might be here. Of course, Jackson was hit with excitement and disbelief. Jackson was told to call out for his mom for her to show up. Mama! 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 He was hit with the reality that it was not his mom, but his other roommate. I really thought it was my mom. I really wondered, is my mom going to surprise me? Did she really come all the way to Korea? I really almost was about to cry. He handled the situation well, but made it clear that it's not something to joke about. He really thought that his mom came to visit him. But don't worry guys, in a later episode, Jackson was actually surprised by both of his parents in a Christmas episode, and boy, was it emotional. Disbandment is a word idols don't want to hear, and it's inevitable that that day will come. 
Neon Punch is a girl group under A100 Entertainment, and in fact, their first and only girl group. The girls debuted in 2018 with their single Moonlight. A few months after their debut, their CEO called a meeting with the girls. There, he told the girls that the future of their group didn't look bright and Neon Punch needed to disband and go back to training. He left the girls in the room to let it sink in and come back to talk to them one-on-one. The girls completely broke down in tears and were distraught with the news. He came back and talked to the girls individually. Some of the girls expressed how much they wanted to continue, and the others felt heartbroken but accepted their so-called fate and showed the CEO that they were still dedicated and would continue to train to re-debut. The CEO handed a note to the girls. It said, Neon Punch, you're doing good. Don't get discouraged and don't give up. A challenge to cross failures. Fail Expo. There, it was revealed that it was all fake and meant for a project for the Ministry of Interior and Safety for people that are experiencing failure and discouragement to see how people cope. It was such a heartbreaking scene to see the girls emotionally torn for a prank or so-called project. Many netizens were angered with the company for pulling such a prank on these girls and it was reported on many media sites. Getting kidnapped is something we see in the movies and know it happens in real life. But we always think, not me, it can never happen to me. But there's still this kind of what if. Well, imagine getting kidnapped by a group of strangers in a different country and you don't know the language. You might think you're shit out of luck. In an episode of BTS's American Hustle Life, BTS were greeted in America by getting kidnapped and taken to an unfamiliar destination and getting yelled at. You could clearly see the fear in some of their eyes, and it was so uncomfortable to watch as a viewer, even though you already knew it was a prank. The boys were instructed to look at the TV, and there they were informed that this was all a part of their program and training would start soon. The men left the boys and said they'd come back tomorrow and left. I was a little frustrated with how the men just left and didn't reassure the boys that it was just a prank instead of leaving them shooken up and confused. I don't know, but that's just me. We've all seen the videos on YouTube and Twitter of idols collapsing and fainting on and off stage. It's not only scary to witness as a fan, but also for the members, idol, and staff as well. The girls thought it would be a fun idea to prank their manager on his birthday. And what kind of fun prank would that be? The girls planned that Hyuna would pretend to faint and act as if she was feeling sick. And she did just that. Now, for some of the people who don't know, yes, before Hyuna was a solo artist and in 4 minute, she was an original member of Wonder Girls. Hyuna left Wonder Girls because of her fainting spells and chronic gastroenteritis. They used Hyanna's real health issues as a prank. And this was aired to the viewers that this was actually real and had viewers scared and worried for Hyanna's health as they watched. The manager carried Hyanna to the bed after she collapsed and was worried over her health. After a few minutes of this, the girls yelled surprise and bring out the manager his birthday cake. Sasangs are an idol's worst nightmare. Now imagine getting kidnapped by one and made to think that they'll harm you if you don't comply with their request. Simon from Dalmatians had experienced just that on TV for the country to see. Simon was tricked into thinking he was going to meet a pro musician. He followed these men into a car and was immediately threatened and blindfolded. He was in that car for two hours as they drove to their destination. There in the building, they tied him up with the rope and tape and still kept a blindfold on him until a strange woman approached him. This lady was pretending to be a sasang of Simon's. She told him how much she loved him and kept touching him and making him profess his love to her. He was clearly uncomfortable and scared in this situation and had to comply with whatever she said. She even made him kiss her and right before the prank ended, she left the room and pretended she shot one of the men helping her earlier and came back in with a gun and pointed it straight to his face. He pleaded and begged with the woman to call his mother before she shot him. She then rolled him to the door and there, the camera and crew were revealed. Now, this had to be the most effed up prank in this video. The show took things to the extreme and I feel like no one should ever have to go through this. April Fool's Day is a holiday where people play practical jokes and pranks on each other. Even celebrities and idols like to jump in and play along with their fans. However, this one particular prank by former JYJ member Jae Jung wasn't well received. We are currently dealing with a global pandemic, and there are some people out there who have made some distasteful pranks that instill fear and panic to the public. 
While most idols and celebrities laid low this April Fool's, Ji Jung announced on his personal Instagram that he had been diagnosed with COVID-19. He claimed that he was in the hospital being treated and wrote this under his now deleted post. Sorry to those who could have been infected because of me. It was because I lived carelessly. Disregarded all of the cautions provided by the government and those around me. Fans of course flooded his comments and sent love, prayers, and support his way. It wasn't too long till the idol confessed Fans were angered and upset that he pulled such a prank that has affected so many people. Because of the backlash, Ji Jung edited his initial post and stated, I am also personally aware that this is something that shouldn't be done. First, over the social media post I wrote, I want to express my sincere apologies to the people who have suffered because of COVID-19. Bad judgment. I knew that's what this was. Practical jokes and pranks are all fun and games. But I feel like some of these were just distasteful and lay out everything that pranks shouldn't be. These are all pranks that have never sat well with me and I felt like we should bring them to light. This is not how I want my idols to be treated, nor do I want these idols to display this type of behavior. Those were just my thoughts, but I want to know how you guys feel about these pranks. Did any of these not sit right with you either? Or do you think some of these weren't a big deal? Let me know if I missed any and don't forget to leave any suggestions in the comments for future video ideas. And as always, thank you for watching and enjoy your stay.